The Spartans said they would flinch. And they did. And welcome to another episode of the SD4L show. I'm Justin Thin. I'm here with my co-host Matt Shin. Matt, how are you doing on this fine Wednesday night, which will be Thursday morning when people listen to this? Dude, it's just impossible to bring the vibes down right now. The spring portal window is closed, so that means departures are over. But more importantly, it's the run for the roses this Saturday. So, folks, 45 minutes of mm. Kentucky Derby talk starts right now, unless you can think of anything more relevant that Michigan State fans would want to hear about, Justin. It's up to you, man. You're, you're, the, you're the real driver of this show. Keys are in your hands, baby. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lean towards the Kentucky Derby just because there's an opportunity to make money there via the wagering yeah. avenue. So uh, let's bet. dive into it. Yeah, bet all the money that you have in your possession on fierceness and then sprinkle a little bit on um, just steel for a uh, hmm. nice little show hmm. bet there. So that concludes uh, Derby Talk right now. For now, we might get to it at the very end here, but uh, I didn't think it actually picked Derby to start. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. The, oh, yeah. My interest and knowledge, uh, or not, I, I should not say knowledge because I don't know any of the horses, but my interest is, yeah. is varied, man. I have a wide array of sports that I would say I'm a connoisseur of in a casual basis. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, fierceness is just like a cheetah that just they dress mm. up as a horse for this Kentucky Derby. So it, it that's I'm feeling very good. I feel very liquid and very good about that coming up on Saturday. So is that horse like one of the like easy favorites? Like one of the guys that I should that's unfortunately the case. Uh there's okay. not a lot of money to be made here. It's five to two odds. Mm. So like two and a half to one odds in, in layman's terms. Uh yeah, I mean, we're kind of like in that one right there. Um, I know that's very chalk, obviously, but if you want one with like decent odds eight to one catching freedom strong closer strong finisher but just steel i gotta say um 20 to one odds right now arkansas derby second place great wow. closing speed and sired by justify another fantastic horse i mean just go ahead and sprinkle some money on there so now that um now that we've really got everyone roped in here for michigan yeah. state football talk uh justin i do you miss the days when aprils were just so boring in college football or like do you kind of like how insane life is now as we are in the early days of may coming off of a, a completely frantic april again matt it's been so long since the the, the pre-nil and portal era of college football that i don't even remember what went okay before this so good for you this good this is you. all that i know um wow just the grind that's all you know jt that's what i'm talking about man just just, just me being tagged in notifications from matt zenis and chris chris hummer yes. from 24 7 and either mm -hmm. my heart dropping or it being a udfa signing with somebody as a training camp invitee so yeah um no i think for most of these guys that have entered so far we, we kind of knew beforehand that that was coming um unfortunately two of the ones that we did not know that it was going to happen with um Gino Vandemark and Derek Harmon were two of the bigger ones sure. um Simeon Barrow too to a large extent as we had talked about on, on this show that Florida State was kind of the one that was all of March trying to right. get them and Michigan State had taken care of that with another raise and um that's why we got on here and I mentioned that seems like the rumors um especially Bud Elliott was talking about that they they seem to be based on old intel that ended up being specifically true, but other teams then spurred the, I guess, second effort to get him into the portal. And um, yeah, so those are the, those are like the main three guys. Uh, Jaden Manga we'll talk about as well here, but yeah, those are the four that were pretty much the only four that were going to be in Michigan State's too deep uh, in 2024. Now we'll talk about still how all the rest of the departures that probably weren't going to play this year or probably even in the future um, are still not ideal in, in some sense, but it's not because of who they are, but it's just because of where it leaves the roster right now. Right. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I guess we can, we can just dive into, to some of those guys. Um, I don't know what, what you wanted to touch on first, Matt. That's a great question because let's start where maybe one of my bigger concerns is, and that is the depth now, unfortunately, it is the two positions that both those starters that we just named left. Uh, Jane and Mangum, you know, the safety depth. Look, you're not worried about who's at the one, right? Like, you have Malik Spencer, you have Dylan Tatum. Okay, you, you feel pretty okay about those two guys. Mm -hmm. It's just behind them. Like, yes. who, who's here that has college experience? Uh, raise your hand. Any Anyone in this room? And then offensive line as well. And the interior, yes. You do have Dallas Fincher. He's played about 140 snaps in his career. You have Christian Phillips, who I think is still less than 40 snaps. Although, albeit, looked good in the spring showcase. 
Gavin Brooks is coming off a big injury. Cole Dellinger, he hasn't played any college snaps. Like it's it's kind of uh touch and go as far as depth goes on the offensive line, too. More yeah. touch than go. But um so yeah, I I'm just gonna tennis it back to you. Yeah. Between the offensive line and defensive line, or defensive secondary, I should say, yeah. where do you want to start? I, I would say, yeah, we'll we'll talk about the offensive line some. Um, I agree. Like the depth is is the big issue there. Um, from where it stood at sp- in spring camp, um, Gavin Brocious and Christian Phillips were pretty much tied for that left guard spot while they were waiting for Luke Newman to come in. Um, so I think like you're right. Like right now, you'd probably project that Chris Phillips would start a right guard. Luke Newman obviously still expected to start a left guard. And then I would say that Gavin Brocious is probably going to be more uh, more competent of a backup than somebody would think coming off of the injury that you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, his, his strength numbers and explosiveness numbers in the offseason were the best of his life. Um, and uh, like I said, like he was repping pretty much even first team guard uh, with Chris. Uh, but then after that, like you were saying, it, it drops off big time. So you really just have one guard uh, right now that the team like kind of like tangibly believes in behind Phillips and Luke Newman. Um, and then Fincher probably just a backup center at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're looking at um, ideally maybe Andrew Dennis coming in from Illinois um, a- as a transfer target. But again, he's going to be a true freshman right about now. Right. Um, still probably would rather have him than maybe moving on to a walk on right there. So like, like in that case, you're probably not going to be getting a lot of guys to come in that are going to be great. But the idea is just, let's get to 85 and let's make sure we're not having to use walk-ons like on the second injury of the season. Whereas let's let's try to have that be on the third or fourth injury per position group. (laughs) Um, So that's kind of how I look at it there Uh, at right tackle. um, Ethan Boyd left. I didn't include him as one of the people they lost in the two deep because from everything I had heard in uh, mid April, early April, it, it seemed like he was kind of deciding to step away from football um, so I don't know if he's actually going to end up choosing another school after entering the portal. He, he certainly may, but, um, he was not injured in March and April and he did not participate in camp. So even if he were to have come back and he ch- ended up choosing not to, to quit football, uh, that alone would have had him significantly behind the eight ball and, uh, Ashton Lepo had kind of decisively shored up that spot. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what he'll be doing next year, but I guess I wouldn't have anticipated him to be as someone on the two deep had he stayed. Um, so I guess that's my logic for not including him there. But yeah, the offensive line, they're going to have to go ahead and, and get some guys, um, several guys, I, I, I would say at least two guys. Um, I would not anticipate them being step in and contribute and raise the floor, but I would expect them to be very valuable depth. Uh, Andrew Dennis probably is someone they're going to pursue very hard, and then we'll see okay. if they try to get a, ta- a left tackle. That's probably the weakest starting position right now. Um, so you could probably, if you can get someone that is um, able to raise the floor, maybe left tackles are you do it. Otherwise, you just got the best available depth you can get anywhere across the line. Right. And then um, safety, yes, you're right. Uh, the, the first team guys, Dylan Tatum, Malik Spencer, should be good to go there. But then what happens is, like, let's say even the first injury happens, right? And our Morion Smith comes in and, he played better than I thought he did last year. And, and you say, like, okay, we're fine, uh, even at one injury. But then when that second injury happens, you're probably looking at either Justin Denson or a walk-on. And yeah, yeah. That's, or you. Like, it could be you, Justin. Me, uh, me, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I I'm, I'm, I'm finally up to kind of the measurables I should have been up to at 6'3". Because uh, okay. that's... Because now I'm finally up to 205. You know, nice. you think like if you're 6'3", you should be at about 200 pounds. But no, just uh, had a horrible diet map. But we, we have uh, gotten gotten right here despite being past my prime. So very useless to, to do it now. But yeah, I'm ready, man. I'm ready to come in. I'm younger than Seth Towns, who today turned down the ability to play his ninth year of college basketball. Good. So, Good. <laughs> have some pride, dude. Jesus. That's about time you stepped away. That's that's a real niche reference there for, for those that aren't plugged in. But yeah, that's yeah, that would have been crazy. Right. But yeah, so that's kind of how I look at not even just safety, but also like even defensive tackle um, and, and some of these other spots where I'm not worried about the first team. I'm not even maybe worried about the, the first guy to come in after there's an injury. Yeah, sure. But it's like, let's say a starter gets hurt in week two and misses six weeks, right? Yeah. And then 
two weeks into that starter six-week injury, your fourth defensive tackle twists an ankle and he's out for three weeks. And suddenly you're in the middle of October with your original DT5 suddenly being your DT3 playing 40% of the snaps of the game. And then the guy right behind him being a walk-on. So like that's where it, I kind of worry about the guys who have left, not actually sitting there looking at the guys being like, oh man, what are they going to do without Sean Brown? Or what are they going to do without Jalen Barber? And like, it's not about who they are. I, I, I would say that, I think, what are we up to now? 17 or 18 departures in the spring window. I think like four, four of them had maybe a tangible, significant future at Michigan State. But I don't know. Um, now, I guess the way you could you could kind of look at it is right now you have 14 spots. They're not going to sit there and bank them. So you're going to get those guys back in terms of just guys that are bodies in, in, the, in the backfield, mm -hmm. um, uh, back of the depth chart. Uh, but – for today, the way I'm looking at the depth chart right now with the 71 out of 85 scholarship names on it, not a lot of starters have been kind of gone, not even a lot of backups, but it gets very, very scary after the second line at, at a lot of these positions. Yes. And it really speaks to how fun the last few years have been, because if you could tell both of us by the way we're talking and maybe by the way you're listening to if you're a state fan, we don't even talk like if injuries happen. Like we, we just talk about like <laughs> when they happen and when we have to get down to the third rung on the death chart. Like is it dude, the last few years have just looked like a collective halftime of space jam with all the Looney Tunes just bandaged up. You know, sewn in an iron lawn for no reason. Like it, it, there's no secret that injuries happen in football, but my God, do they happen in East Lansing at an alarming rate. So this is why like depth, when you get down to the third run and then some positions too, like we just said, the second rung gets me a little scared. Um, there, there's no wondering about yeah. that. Um, I, but I think if, if you, if you understand that, well, shoot, if they would have had to have played um, Son Brown this year, anyway, season's over. Um, so if you look There's at something that, to that, right? I mean, yeah, right. really though. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, the way, the way is, is like, all right, so this is going to be a different guy that they have to go and get who maybe like, wasn't even anything better than maybe all mountain West honorable mention and Fine. probably Great. not very good. He's going to be your fourth safety. I mean, at the end of the day, you're not in any different of a place. This is a different name of yeah. who that average to below average guy is going to be here when the whole portal is said and done. So, I guess I probably even made a little too much about the fact that these other guys left that I'm even saying would not have had much of a future here. But yeah, like that's really all I have to say on kind of these departures is as you lose a, a big piece in Derek Harmon, um, who Michigan State was, as I've said on the board before, yep. Michigan State was giving him well, well above market. And um, there's like two schools on planet Earth that would give him more than that. Not even Oregon and Ohio State could even compete with Michigan State's offer. And gotcha. it's USC and Miami. I don't know why Miami's the visit didn't kind of happen, but looks like USC is kind of where he's trending to. And then um, Simeon Barrow, um, he just always seems to have one foot out of the door. And it uh, seems like that's what's occurred here. Uh, Gino Vandermark, I do know his NIL number. Not going to say it on the podcast, but as fair as you could possibly imagine for okay. an interior offensive lineman that is, I don't even think was honorable mention yet. Um, so. yeah. Let's say that if you asked me what I thought his NIL number was before I heard this number, I would have said something that's maybe 30 to 40% of what his number was. Okay. So that's kind of the way I put it there. So Michigan State really couldn't have and shouldn't have done anything about him wanting to leave on the last day of the portal window as a leverage play. And then Jaden Mangum, I do not know his number. Um, do not even know the range of his number. Uh, so don't don't want to speculate anything on there, um, even though I, I candidly will say that I'm shocked that Gino Vandermark wanted to enter the portal. Um, but yeah, I think uh, with Jaden, we'll see what happens. I know that uh, Jonathan Smith would, would welcome him back if he wanted to come back. But as mm -hmm. I kind of said on the board yesterday, and as I've kind of alluded to in the past, um, there's a way of handling business and there's a way of kind of doing it correctly and making sure you get your value. One of them is not trying to back your coach into a corner on the last day of the window saying, Hey, if you kind of don't give me a huge raise out of nowhere, even though we kind of got new contracts once you got here and haven't played football since then, um, you're not going to be able to really replace me. 
this is kind of the last day. You really should go ahead and do this because even if if you do give it to me, then obviously I can't leave. So, Coach, go ahead and just give me a huge raise. And Coach is not going to let that happen. And suddenly there's going to be a whole new way of doing business in East Lansing where all 85 kids are lined up there saying, Coach, give us a raise or we're leaving every single window. Yeah. So even if they win one less game, one fewer game, because they took a stand on a couple guys on the final day of the portal, that's fine. The the difference the difference between seven and five or six and six or six and six and five and seven is not worth having a kind of precedent set for all the future years of your program when you have more talent here that hey, in 2024, those few guys they played by this playbook and then that's passed down from the class of 2024 that's here right now to yep. the class of 2025 to 2026 and saying, Hey, let's try to take advantage of our head coach. So this this had to be done the way that it was done with with kind of the guys on the last day of the portal and um obviously that's easier said in april than it is in november when you see maybe a team running right up the middle at, at Derek Harmon's spot and, and going up and kind of putting sure. 200 rushing yards on them and there's lumps there's there's trade-offs to having principled stances sometimes like that but that's kind of what had to happen here and um i think most fans honestly took it pretty well from kind of what i saw yeah. um I try not to just go ahead and just say everything that I know. And especially in this day and age where you don't want to sound like it's sour grapes against the kids. And I've always been very, very pro player empowerment, but there's ways to do it. This is not a way that you can do it in the NFL. This is not a way that you can do it in corporate America. A lot of the ways, a lot of the ways I like to think about like what players deserve is I compare it to regular population where I would say for the longest time, like, Hey, if someone goes to music school at Michigan state and they upload an album on Spotify, they could make royalties why couldn't a basketball player kind of sign a basketball and put it on eBay, right? And make money. Like if I, as a student could walk up to them, get them to sign a basketball and put it on eBay myself, right? but they can't. So like, that's how I like look at all my player empowerment stances. What was happening here at the very end of this portal in no way or shape or form. Can you compartmentalize this and say, this is okay. This is kind of what they deserve. This is how they should be maximizing their value because this is just bad faith negotiating. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that it was not allowed here. The, the bad faith negotiating that that might be like the most accurate buzzword here. I, I will, I will give Jaden Mangum credit for this. At least like he didn't double dip. Like he didn't do this during the winter and then spring portal season. Like it's one thing to, Hey, I'm going to go to the portal. I'm going to see what numbers out there. Hey coach, this is what numbers out here. Have me back, which is fine. Honestly, that's probably a very smart move for these kids to get a pay right. raise in corporate America. Largely, that's right. how you get pay raises by jumping around to other companies, see what else is out there. Go to your company, say, "Hey, you know, I like it here. This is what number is going to keep me around." But JT, uh, you do that in January, and then you mm-hmm. come back in April and you say, "Hey, boss, it's it's me again. I got more numbers for you that you got to match if you want to keep me." Um, yep. What do you think your boss is going to do that time? I don't think there's going to be a lot of smiles and daisies being handed your way. Um, it's going to be more of a, you can go hit the bricks here. Uh, yeah. And good luck. Because also, too, at the end of the day, uh, we can edit this part out. Um, it's not nice. But, like, what would you be paying for in the very end? Yeah. Well, like, we, we don't got Orlando Pace walking in my office right now saying, hey, rent's due, baby. I would like another pay raise. Like, I, no, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, leave. Uh, so you got to set the precedent. You got to set the tone for the season. And I know it's it, it's it's still not fun saying goodbye to projected starters. Let's not get it twisted. But this is what happens during regime changes everywhere, everywhere. JT, I, it's been a big number this spring, but in total, winter and spring, the number is in the mid thirties right now for Michigan State as far as transfer departures go. Who else is hanging out in the mid thirties? Big Bad Alabama, they've had mid-30s of transfers so far in their new regime. So this is just what happens. Is it fun? No, but let's make no mistake. Not only is it a regime change, it's also a rebuild too. So that's where it is. Because this is, you know what, JT, let me ask you a question here. Because maybe this just helps us all understand where each other's thinking right now. Did what happened in the last few weeks change your expectations of the upcoming season? And you can start it by saying what your expectations were beforehand and not where they are right now. But I, has the needle moved from your prediction of this season at all in the spring portal? I would say not a ton. The only thing for me is that they might give up maybe 35 additional rushing yards per game. 
Um, so I guess d- d- does that mean that's a, a half game less, uh, a one yeah. game less in the metrics um, if you were to run the expected win total? So, but yeah, like that's pretty much it. I think uh, defensive tackle is some some place that the, the position room went from kind of being like an A to. I guess we'll see kind of what happens with JVR Suggs when it comes this upcoming window. But I'm big on Daquan Douse. I think Brandon Lane was a, was a savvy pickup. Um, I don't think either of those guys are going to be all conference, but I also don't think Simeon Barrow would have been either. So it really yeah. comes down to just they lost Derek Harmon is the one thing that sticks out to me for this portal window. Um, I, I think kind of at the end of the day, like if you look at Michigan State's overall number of starters lost since the last snap of the season, they have lost maybe what two good players to draft slash graduation in terms of Nick Samak and Jacoby Winman. And then they lost four starters to the portal just now. So all in all, they've lost six starters, two to the draft slash graduation and four to this portal situation. So they've lost six. Uh, that's pretty normal across the board. The only difference is they didn't have a lot of time to replace these most recent four. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's really the only difference. Like they lost a very normal amount of no- players. It was just to a different situation. Um, so it's not like there's some just staggering departure of talent that no one has ever seen before. It was just sucks that four of them left in, in the second part of the two windows. And that's really it. I think um, they'll, I think the Jaden Mangum loss will be the one that's felt the least by them. Um, they were, I was just looking at some of the guys that are doing due diligence on, um, I don't know why the name is escaping me, but there's a, uh, I kind of sent them to you earlier today, uh, the safety from, uh, Miami who was at, hmm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm no help either here, Justin, the, 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 the I've got it, I've got it. Me. We'll edit all this out. It's yeah. fine. It's all good. Sa- yeah, yeah, Savion no Riley from Vanderbilt, right? So he's a guy that yes, just Vanderbilt, entered the portal right. yesterday. Just looking at it very quickly, he was a redshirt freshman at Vanderbilt last year. He had 12 tackles against Florida. He only started two games. He only played an eight. He had 44 tackles, was fourth on the team. It's not bad. He, <laughs> he's somebody that you can get, and he'd be a redshirt sophomore right now, this yeah. upcoming window, in exchange for Jaden Mangum leaving. You get an extra year of eligibility out of it. This guy's great measurables. Looks like an NFL guy. Redshirt sophomore this upcoming year. Played in the SEC all of last year. Uh, he was out, all academic in the SEC, so you know that he doesn't have. Uh, he'll be eligible. He won't have any issues. Um, he did transfer to Miami in December, and he just left um, two days ago. Um, somebody could say, "All right, is that a red flag? He's transferring twice in five months." I mean, maybe, uh, yeah, but I think it's less of a red flag than maybe Amorian Smith playing uh, in, in week two or week three. Um, who, he's a good player, so I, I he don't. He had some good hits. Players. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's unfair for me to say. But but what what I mean is, would you rather have uh, this guy and a Morian Smith or just a Morian Smith in yeah, the safety right, room? Right, right. Like, and and the only downside is that he left Miami after four months. Uh, shoot, I consider that good judgment. Just him undoing what he did the first time around, going to Miami to begin with. So, I think um, like that's what I mean. Like that's just one name that I came across today. He's not even somebody on Twitter that everyone's like, oh, one of the best safeties. Right. You got to go after him. Like that's not something that's a big big loss to me in terms of Mango. Harmon, I've already said, kind of. I think that's a pretty big loss. Barrow, um, like I think if they had J- JVR Suggs, like that'd be kind of on the same plane. I know okay. he's coming up from Grand Valley State, but the kid has thirty nine offers, twenty one from the Power Four in like right. four days. Like, I'll tell you one thing: Simeon Barrow did not have that much attention. Um, I don't know if he had more than five or six schools calling uh, gotcha. with significant interest here the last few days. I had heard so. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, it, it just boils down to me that there's depth issues on the interior of the offensive line. Now with Gino gone, um, I don't know how much better he would have been than Chris Phillips. They, they were all repping the same. I think I heard that Phillips had graded higher than Gino on at least one of the scrimmages, and I don't know what happened in the other two. So he could be three for three, could be just one for three. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot, all of it is just a wash. And they'll, whoever's here, they'll coach. Harmon, I'll keep saying, is a loss. That's really it for me. It's get some more depth go from 71 scholarship guys to 85 and whoever's here it shouldn't make much of a difference on the win total yeah and already some like big wins this year too in the spring transfer portal so i know we still have plenty of weeks to go but even the most recent guy in ed woods like i that's a very important pickup because that was another position where depth was really struggling and it 
like you would still, you know, use another guy there. Don't get me wrong. Like, I don't think we should close up shop at, at getting cornerback depth, but that's a guy that at least is going to be a guy that's going to compete for starting reps right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, opposite of Chance Rucker. I mean, that's massive to get him. The best guy over at Arizona State, according to PFF, he was the highest coverage guy for the Sun Devils, sixth best in the Pac-12 back when that conference was still around. And, yeah, <laughs> it was it, it, it was it was a dire need. And one that was a surprise for Kenny Dillingham over at Arizona State. He spoke to the media that yeah. this was not expected. So it wasn't a situation where – Okay, well, he just lost his starting job, and he was just cast away because, hey, fifth-year senior, we don't need you. We'd rather take a young, up-and-coming guy to the transfer portal in that spot. Like, no, he he wanted better things, and, well, hopefully he's going to find them here in East Lansing here in a few months. So that, that was a big win, especially, hey, beating Alabama. That's right. I have I have a new tidbit here live, Matt. That okay, I okay. Got a DM back from Terrell Allen, a defensive and looks like a defensive, you know, defensive end uh, from Tennessee State University. Okay. This past season, he had 14 and a half sacks, led the FCS, 28 wow. tackles for loss. He won the Buck Buchanan Award, which is the player, the best defensive player in the FCS. Okay. Uh, he said Michigan State reached out to him today. So we will see uh, kind of what happens from that. But I had reached out to him the second year of the portal. Uh, basically thought he'd probably be the best guy that, that everyone would be going after right now. Um, a big South OVC defensive player of the year in 2023, uh, 65 tackles on the year, which is, which is hard for defense. That's, linemen. that's, that's healthy. That's <laughs> wow. That's nice. yeah. So just, Jeez. uh, just sorry to interrupt the flow, but just no, got the DM for him right now. So again, like these guys are, these guys are, Probably bad choice of word, but they're relentless in the in the. Hey, the there we go. Bring it back. No, we're gonna remarket that word. That's right. We're we're gonna claim it and we're gonna make it a good word again. Um. Yeah. Hey, on that note, I know you just brought up Javier Suggs not too long ago, but yeah. on you know the same path of lower level defensive linemen that are going to be getting a lot of attention from power six schools power six. What is this basketball season? <laughs> power four schools. Let's try that again. Um, locked in. 100% for this weekend, or what are we feeling here for Suggs, who has already got a lot of attention, already visited, what, Florida State, Arkansas. I know I'm going to miss the other three schools, but nevertheless, big-time programs. Is he yeah, locked yeah, in for yeah. this weekend? Yeah, so uh, he grew up a Wisconsin fan, visited Wisconsin first, okay. and then um, Michigan State offered while he was on the Wisconsin – or a day before he took the Wisconsin visit, got him scheduled for midweek. Other schools started to want to schedule visits, uh, Florida State, Kentucky – and um, at the time, Michigan had an offered, and at the time, Miami had an offered, and at the time, Oklahoma had an offered. Um, and then I heard that Michigan State got him to move his MSU visit from that midweek Tuesday, Wednesday ish when Alan True first said he would be coming to Sunday. So they kind of wanted the last, uh, they wanted the last at bat. And then okay. that's when he snuck in Kentucky and Florida State into the rotation in the middle of the week. Got it. And, um, so, like, we'll see if there's any more changes since a change has already happened, but that was more so Michigan State kind of wanting the last the last go at him. Um, I guess what could happen is he could just extend his decision timeline and also take visits after the MSU one, but I think uh, they're pretty confident that he'll be here on Sunday. And um, Greg Cooper, uh, he's former Michigan State player. Uh, admittedly, I don't know much about his time at Michigan State, but uh, I know that he, he trains out in Flint. And uh, he's somebody that has worked with Suggs in the past, and um, gotcha. he he will be in his ear, I'm sure, about how uh, pro MSU um, of, of a pitch that he'll have. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, he should be good to visit. It'll be a very tough battle, uh, as I just said, some of the schools yeah. that were involved there. But uh, hey, uh, if if Wisconsin's uh, lead there was that was really the only tidbit I'd heard from the whole time, and other than that, he was wide open. I think that's one school that that you're okay with, kind of having to come back from as uh as as good old time as it has shown that uh shouldn't yeah. be too hard to do. Beat me to the reference. Look at you, man. <laughs> You're a pros pro. Um <laughs> does that put a bow on football or is there anything else you want to talk about or uh because I like JT it, it sounds like the vocal minority saying that the, the program's dead and Jonathan Smith has lost it already. Um oh, start the Urban Meyer rumors up Matt. Great don't threaten me with a good time. Let's <laughs> let's 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 start farming some content, baby. Let's let's get these numbers back up. Come on, let's let's go, JT. Woo! Um, 
God, what a time. My bookmarks are so full still. Good, as they should be. Let's go. Why not? <laughs> I didn't do anything with them. I need to just clear them out. It's all all the people that said, oh, you're you're just mad that you don't have the inside yeah, you're a scoop hater. on Urban Meyer. That's the only reason you're saying it's not going to happen. Salty JT. Oh. That's right. That's what I know you as all the time. Just always salty <laughs> over there. Um, I almost said what an off season that was, but I that was literally in the middle of the season when all that was happening. Like that's... <laughs> What a last few months that we as state fans have uh, lived through here, folks. This has been – we deserve a good fall. We yeah. we deserve some health for our football players first and foremost, and that's turning into just fun um, coming up here. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, sure, th- th- it was fr- it was a very frenzy-filled last few days of the portal. Seeing starters leave is not fun. The two defensive linemen obviously not having a great time with that, but – I don't know. Like, if this happens in two or three years, like when Jonathan Smith has made inroads with this program, has already ingrained his culture, and this is still happening, I'm going to be whistling a different tune. All right. I'm not going yeah. to just be so, you know, oh, laissez faire about it. But like, right. this is a regime change. This is a rebuild. I know that's a hard word for people to understand sometimes is that, oh, this is Michigan State. We don't rebuild. Like, guys, Yes, we are right now, and this is necessary to go through some roster turnover. I know that we just did this three years ago, and this is not fun to do every three years, but like I, I feel comfortable with how everything has gone this offseason so far. I, I I know that it's been ups and downs, but let's also celebrate the wins that we've gotten here in this transfer portal. It hasn't been all bad. And, 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 and Matt, I will also I, – I should have said this sooner – there's one thing that you will notice about the pattern of kind of how some guys ask for more money a second time without any football happening in between, and some guys yeah. that didn't. You know who did it, Matt? Huh. The guys that Jonathan Smith has had relationships with since they were in high school. The guys mm. that he, he coached for multiple years at Oregon State. The guys that he brought here with him. Those guys also happen to be the best players on the team. Those guys could have, could have had way more leverage than – the guys that actually went this route. If sure. Aiden Childs wanted to enter the portal the past few weeks or uh, Tanner Miller, uh, maybe even Jake Melling, sure. those guys wanted to try sure. this little tactic. They probably could have gotten more out of it than the guys that end up, ended up doing so, but they didn't because for them, it's about the long-term relationship that they have crafted with Coach Smith. It's them believing in his ability to develop, which again, like uh, that stuns me about like the, the decision by Gino, like, I don't mean to keep like harping on it or, or like I, I, he's like 21, 22, but like sure. you just saw what, what happened with a Talise Fuaga and like how he got developed. Right. You have a guaranteed, mostly guaranteed starting right guard spot under Coach Smith. You are making a, a great, great amount of money. And you're just like, ah, you know, um, Oklahoma, like I, I like them a lot, even though Michigan State blew out their NIL some just four months ago. Let me try to hop back in the portal and see if I can get a few more dollars. Like, I, it's just mind blowing to me. So, uh, uh, yeah, like not to get back on that tangent, but like at the end of the day, like that's like what you're saying about how, like, if this is happening a few years from now, that's that's scary. I, I agree because I don't anticipate it happening. Yeah. Because the guys that he's going to have by then that are going to be the most talented, the ones that have the most leverage, those are going to be the guys that he has known since high school. Those are going to be the guys that came to him because of relationships plus NIL and not just NIL. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, we'll even see if NIL is a thing in two years. So I'm not too worried about how sure. it's going to go down long term, but that was a great point that I don't anticipate this happening in the future. And not just because he laid down the law and didn't and entertain this kind of tactic, but also because those guys will have chosen him for different reasons than a Jaden Mangum who didn't really choose him. And, Potentially, uh, right? Yeah. 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 And like, let's let's not get a twist. I'm not here saying that we're never going to lose someone in the transfer portal ever oh, right. again. I'm more so speaking to the, the double dipping strategy. You know, the hey winter portal. <laughs> guess what? I'm back for right. more money in the spring, or just waiting until midnight the last day. I, but hey, nevertheless, uh, good luck to all those kids out there. Uh, go get your bread if that's what you chase. Go get that playing time if that's what you also chase. But, yeah, look, I, it, it is what it is. I mean, my expectations haven't changed too much. Maybe that's because right. I'm on the lower side of expectations. I'm more of the 7-5, and 6-6. Six and six. I still think that's very in bounds for this upcoming year. But, hey, we got plenty of offseason to talk about what expectations can be and what record we are projecting here. Um, speaking of long offseason, if you want to switch to basketball right now, that is. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. 
Why not? Because some massive news broke here, JT. It's going to be a long time since we, until we even get the dates of these games, but Big Ten Conference opponents, they have dropped. We're talking who Michigan State is going to play just at Breslin Center, just on the road, and then some home and away games. JT, you ready? I'm going to blurt out a bunch yes. of names to you yes. right now. Okay, home games only. The Hoosiers of Indiana, Nebraska, Oregon, Penn State, Purdue, Washington, and Wisconsin. Now, on the road only is Iowa, Maryland, Northwestern, Ohio State, Rutgers, UCLA, and USC is going to be your uh, West Coast swing. And then your home and home, Illinois, Michigan, Minnesota. I got to say, JT, I'm liking a lot of what I'm seeing right now. And I swear I'm not just like being an MSU homer, although that's just plainly what it sounds like and looks like if you're watching on YouTube right now. But uh, truly, I've seen some schedules like this before where it's like, oh, that sucks. Kind of like last year where, oh, God, we, oh, ju oh, just Mackie, not even a home and home with them. Awesome. Or, oh, just going to Assembly Hall, Indiana. No, that doesn't seem great, but I, I don't know. I, I can keep on rambling about this as long as you want me to. But is there any instant takeaway that you got? from these opponent matchup drops right here. Yeah, pretty much the same as everybody where I uh, don't have to go to at Mackey this year for the first time in my life. Isn't it great, man? Uh, like, I, I'm going to I'm gonna shed a tear when the season's all done and have no memory of playing in that building. That's going to be awesome. Too bad this is the one year I wanted to see if uh, if they could kind of go over there and get it done. But I will not yeah, be We'll get them next year, the following year. 2026, <laughs> no, they'll, they'll, we got their name. We got they'll, their name. they'll have developed a, a seven foot four guy by then. This is the one year between, like, Probably this is right, like the actually. year between yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Isaac Haas and Zach Eady that we kind of had, like the stretch. This yeah. this would have been the, the next one, but oh well, we'll we'll take on their cyborg seven foot five guy that they have in twenty twenty six with uh, with uh, somebody I'm sure at center, and yeah, um, yeah it's uh, it's it's a fun to kind of always think about this schedule. I know um, uh, I'm sure you have already booked your tickets tentatively without knowing any dates to California. Absolutely. Uh, every, every weekend, yeah. every single weekend, I'm booked <laughs> off. That's right. Delta loves me. <laughs> it's it's going to be a great, great winter for yours truly. <laughs> and then they're also going to be in Maui in, in November. Yeah, um, you got that right. Yep. Monday through Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Um, coincidentally, I have already put vacation days on my calendar for those days. Not sure if I'm actually going to end up going, but I uh, sounds yeah, do yeah. it. My uh, sorry, uh, Hawaii in uh, November when you live in Michigan sounds uh, sounds very Dude. appetizing. I mean, year round it is amazing to go to. No, JT, you are young, you are free. Go blow that money right now in Hawaii. This is not going to be a trip or a few years down the road. You're going to look back and be like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. No, I'm imploring you right now. Actually, you know, share the screen, pull, pull up right, right on your browser delta.com or united.com whatever airline you prefer i don't care what it is but yeah book those tickets right now um no it's gonna be like a fun yeah. schedule I, really quick i, I just want to uh circle three things that i like about the schedule right now okay. one is that the home only game one of them is going to be indiana because they are cooking in the transfer portal right now i have no interest in going to assembly hall okay like that that's great that you just see them once it's going to be at breslin center the second thing i gotta say like i feel like with the away onlys MSU got a pretty good break here, right? I mean, like, there's no way that you're just going to skate by and get seven automatic wins here. Let's not get it mm -hmm. twisted. But Iowa, manageable. Northwestern, yes, Boo Booey's gone. That's manageable. Rutgers, yes. now this is where it gets a little hairy. I mean, Pikele teams are always hard to play at the rack. They're gonna they got have some those, five stars coming they got in. got those up. five stars, of course. But we've also seen that, hey, maybe five stars don't instantly contribute all the time and then who knows what the cast around them is going to be like so while i don't expect michigan state to be favored in that one that could be a close one. First team to 50 sort of game like it usually is against Rutgers. nevertheless ucla usc okay i don't even know how good of teams are going to be ucla they've got a pretty high ceiling it appears but regardless I, just going out to the west coast is going to be a little difficult anyway still beatable a right. little difficult and then Maryland, Ohio State, those are going to be hard ones. Okay, like I circle Maryland as going to be a very difficult game this year. I know that we've had luck in in the DMV area when we played them recently. They're shaped up to be a good team. And then Ohio State, yeah, that's going to be a good team. But, hey, again, you can't skate completely free during your road games. I got to say, though, like that's – it could have been a lot worse is the yeah. other thing. And then the third thing I'm just going to blurt out really quick, I do like Michigan having the home and home there. You got to have that rivalry and yes. – um, if I could play Minnesota 16 times in a season, I would. So the fact that we maxed out with facing the Gophers twice next year, 
I like that. Uh, not to just yeah. chuck two automatic wins, but um, yeah, no, Matt. They uh, they have no money on Minnesota, so it is unfortunate. It is a shame. It would have been would have been it would have been okay if uh, they got to keep a couple of their players, but yeah. they uh, Ben they Johnson's going to play himself at point guard. It's yep. it's going to be net. I don't. How do you coach yeah. Minnesota, man? Like I feel so bad I for Ben know, Johnson. Man. He's a, he's a good coach too. He's an amazing. Like yeah, I've loved I've loved that hire since the start. But like oh, yeah. the story is the same as it always goes with Minnesota coaches, whether it's Patino, whether it's um. Who am I thinking? Tubby Smith, right? Yeah, who, yeah, this yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. They, they are just so far behind the rest of the Big Ten as far as resources goes. And, like, it's even magnified 10 times, uh, 20 times in the NIL era. Oh, yeah. Indiana <laughs> probably has Indiana probably has more money tied up in their seventh best player than Minnesota's yes. top player was making after yeah. uh, taxes. So, right. right. It, 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 it is very, it is very puzzling. Resources it, were an issue back in the day when like resources really didn't mean all that much. And now yeah. resources are damn near everything. And it, well, of course you're going to get taken to the slaughterhouse. So I, <laughs> I, do you just cut the sport if you're Minnesota? And I know it's so dr- over dramatic and, and drastic, but like, damn man, like th- they are operating at big sky levels. It seems like and I feel so bad for Ben Johnson. Yeah. And, and also like the other end of that, like what is Indiana doing? Like, the, the return on investment to maybe make the tournament this year as a 10 seed, a nine seed, maybe an eight seed, like there's got to be a better use of, of your U.S. dollars than that if you're an Indiana Beast. Uh, like, what else is there to do, man? I like that they just bleed, bleed, bleed. That's basketball. true. That's like, true. True football. Like Kurt Zignetti, like good, good luck, man. You got to use your own salary to get any NIL around these parts. All of it's going to basketball around here. So I don't know. I, it's it's it, it's just nasty out there. Yeah. I just feel so bad for yeah lower level teams. Yeah, uh, I think hey, good, uh, good to see him twice though next year. <laughs> that's, I, that's good. I, I think I'll be rooting very hard against Indiana basketball this upcoming year. Uh, in addition yeah. to maybe Colorado football, who else? Um, you know, not to bring it back to football, but you just said Colorado football. Um, I, we as state fans can lay our head on the pillow yes. at night knowing yes. that you know, despite what your opinion on how the transfer portal is going so far. Folks, we we can take solace in knowing that our coach isn't spending the day after the portal window closes tweeting out, LOL, 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 <laughs> and law Jesus to <laughs> guys that he called old furniture and cast it away. Like, at, at least we have an adult in the building here, if not for nothing else. I say what you will about how the offseason is going. I think a lot of us are pretty optimistic about it, but even if you're the pessimistic of the pessimist, it's not that. At least it's not that going on. That is just downright embarrassing. Uh. It is, Matt. And, um, you know, I think uh, it's good for college football to have, like, a super villain like that. It's great. And, honestly, I, the fact that they're not going to be a good team this year makes it even yes. funnier. Like, that, yes. <laughs> it's awesome. And I'm also <laughs> glad great. that Shadur Sanders was directly involved in some of the low-class comments that are going around. Uh, I know I quote tweeted yesterday where – he yeah. said that he didn't know who that one dude was, and he said uh, dude was probably mid. And I, I quote tweeted it, and I was like, if dude was probably mid, he's probably one of the best guys on the team. So like, I, but I really, I, yeah. right? So like, I'm glad that I don't have to be like, well, dang, I'm I'm approaching 26 here. It's uh, it's George Sanders. He's like 21. Like right. I, me hating on like, like is this okay? Hate now I'm away. just like, all right, man. Like I remember he tweeted this about another guy that that that's in college football. Someone who was speaking out about being hurt by his dad, and this is how he acted. So I'm I'm going full hater mode. And, and he's okay financially too. Like right. who who cares? Yeah. Like, I just need to talk to a Colorado fan, or like specifically, I would love to talk to a donor hook them up to a polygraph test and really ask them, like, are they okay with how things are going on? Because Colorado <laughs> fans are telegraphing, like, oh, everyone's talking about Colorado. We must be doing something right. Like, everyone's kind of laughing at you, but don't yeah. let that detail get in the way. Like, I, I just have to know, like, guys, it, when you're seriously asked, are you really sure this is going to all turn out okay in the end? Do you really think so? Or are you going to join the rest of us, College Football Nation, and kind of understand that this is a train wreck that is about to go off the rails if it's not already off the rails? I mean, I'll give them I'll give them this upcoming season, which, by the way, they're over under for wins is four and a half. I'll, I'll give them the chance to stun us and go to the Tony the Tiger Bowl 
But like as things stand no right shot. now, like whoa, you talk about the last program that should be running your mouth. <laughs> oh, they're talking like they're Oregon out there, man. They're talking like they're Washington. Yeah. I, yeah. I, Arrogance is fine in sports for me. If you could back it up, I got. I'm a Conor McGregor fan. Like for crying out loud, like if, if you could back up what you talk about, I I got no issue. Yeah. If if you're getting the SHI, you know what kicked out of you almost every single weekend. I, I'm not sure if I'd be doing all this this offseason. I'd also try a little bit of high school recruiting, yeah. too, if I could just throw out free advice there. But anyway, oh, man. I go gonna, on and on. He's not I go on and on. <laughs> he's not going to be around long enough to coach those kids. So it, Right, man. I mean, yeah, no wonder you have the time today. You don't do anything yeah. <laughs> except, he, except he, tweet. He really yeah. He tweets more than I do. It's crazy. Like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it is just a marvel. But, again, I am so glad that they're in college football. Yeah. Because if not for nothing else, like, just pure comedy, man. Yeah. Like, this is it, and and I and I else. I need I need something to hate on because yeah right. as as I was kind of saying yesterday like say what you will about me I I might be wrong here and there on a player or two sure I, I, say whatever <laughs> one thing you cannot say is that I can't hate with the best of them all right <laughs> I, I I have a PhD in hating I would like to consider myself you'll you'll never hear me compliment myself in anything. I will uh-huh. gladly go ahead and give myself a pat on the back as being one of the greatest haters <laughs> I know. People have tried to hate at this level. They've tried to they've tried to match my hate. They feel nobody can hate when I hate. The way I hate, unmatchable. So I Deion Sanders, Sadura Sanders, and mm-hmm. Indiana basketball donors. I'll be waiting. Your time's up. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Time's up. No, I Oh man, like truly, that is just what makes it fun. Like I would not be laughing like this and having a smile on my face. Like again, if they were a good team, if they were ten and right. two, like I'd be like, oh my god, wow, they're really arrogant, but they're backing it up. What can you do? What can you do? Like yeah. they're not saying anything wrong. But Matt, oh my god, look in a mirror for God's yeah. sake! Just what? Matt, you know, you, I, a few episodes ago, um, I I held up that plaque, um, and it was the Mark D'Antonio Pride comes before the fall. Oh, I certainly. Think, yeah, yeah. I I think what I'm going to do is every single time Colorado football posts a final score uh, of which many will be losses, I'm just going to quote yeah, yeah. tweet that with the with the picture of the plaque uh, probably yeah. comes before the fall. So that God. is that is all channel my hate. I forgot who tweeted this, but someone made it an incredible point. It's, it's probably drill. Oh uh, no! It, it was it was something along the lines of like, do, is Colorado really sure they want to rev up the engines this much to where every single team they face wants to beat the piss out of them? Like, and someone said like it, it'd be like if Rutgers talked like this and everyone just absolutely getting stoked to play Rutgers and hanging up sixty points on them every single game, which again could very well happen this year. But I yeah, yeah man. <laughs> it's. It's uh, it makes for a fun off season, man. Yeah. Gone are the days of just nothing going on in months March through August. Like the, there's there's plenty going on these days, man. It's it's nice. We're blessed. Yeah, We're blessed. yeah. Well, we'll see what happens when the guy when the guys are under contracts and they're employees and um, we'll everything's more structured. We we may go back to things being a little more boring. Um, one can hope. One can hope. But until then, we are here. We are monitoring who enters the portal we are going ahead and giving our honest takes here like we did today and uh we will see who's here we will we will cover who's here and um that's pretty much all that matters in in the first year is whoever wants to be here ideally somebody with potential uh somebody that wants to be coached up over multiple years and uh whoever fits that mold they will coach them up with the best of them and uh we'll kind of see what happens and go from there but We'll keep breaking it down as the weeks and days go on. Is there anything else that we would like to hit on, Matt? Fierceness to win, just steal the show. That's it. Okay. That's, all, that's all you need for Saturday. 6.57 post time. Pour yourself a few mint juleps and have yourself a dandy weekend, folks. That's right. Sounds good. There you have it. Matt has went ahead and given you guys the golden ticket. So Wait. Yes. Comment below and everything, but hey, the the emoji. Yes. Let's let's use the running horse emoji. If you are one There's of the running sentence, horse emoji, oh oh, there sure is. Oh yeah, you got to look, and it's not an easy one to find. It's in the middle of the animal section, but yeah, there, there's like a horse racing emoji. Um, if you're one of the seven people that are still for some reason listening to this, just comment that horse racing emoji below on YouTube. Oh, I and, do uh, see that emoji. The uh, person's wearing an orange top. Yeah. Are they? The, yeah. the, the, if okay. if you type running horse on your 
uh, thing. It doesn't show up, but if you just type horse into the emoji search bar, it is one, Perfect. two, three, four, fifth. Bang. Yeah. Bang. Comment that below if you're still listening. Yes. Which, uh, if you are, thank you. Thank you very, genuinely, thank you very much for listening yes. to the 50th minute of SD4L uh, as we have spiraled into Colorado and Kentucky Derby talk. Who didn't have that on the agenda today? Yeah. yeah. Certainly in the show notes. But yeah, so appreciate everyone for listening. Uh, Shout out to everyone that likes and subscribes. And as always, we'll see you next week. And uh, shout out Tyrese Maxey.